Greetings students and welcome back to another video on nonlinear dynamics. In this lecture, we're going to discuss linear stability analysis of differential equations. In particular, we're going to be looking at the one-dimensional dynamical system or differential equation given by dx by dt equals some function of x. Now, why do we care about linear stability analysis? Well, because linear stability analysis allows us to determine the stability of fixed points algebraically, which saves time in that you don't have to draw the phase portrait or the graph of f of x. It's also useful because it provides information about how quickly nearby trajectories converge to or diverge from the fixed points. Now, in linear stability analysis, what we do is expand f of x around the fixed point and use the linear approximation to determine the nature of the fixed point. In other words, we linearize the expansion, and here's specifically how we do it. Say you have a one-dimensional dynamical system in which the position x of a particle is described by the following differential equation, you know, the same one that we wrote above. Now suppose x sub f is the fixed point we're interested in. Let's consider a very small perturbation from the fixed point x sub f given by epsilon. Now given x sub f, what we want to do is determine how very small perturbations from that fixed point, in other words, how very small epsilon, change in time. You can imagine that if these perturbations grow with time, then the particle's position diverges from the fixed point, which means that the fixed point x sub f is unstable. However, if those perturbations decay with time, then the particle's position converges to the fixed point, which means that x sub f is stable. So let's take the time derivative of the perturbation epsilon to find out how it changes with time. Here, d epsilon by dt is dx by dt minus d of x sub f by dt, using just the definition of epsilon. Now, the derivative of the fixed point is obviously zero because the fixed point is just a constant, so the derivative of epsilon is just dx by dt, which we already know is f of x. But we know that x is just epsilon plus x sub f from the definition of epsilon above, so that means d epsilon by dt is just a function of epsilon plus x sub f. Now remember, linear stability analysis involves a linearization about the fixed point x sub f. So what we do in order to perform that linearization is carry out a Taylor series expansion of f of epsilon plus x sub f and truncate that Taylor series expansion at the linear term. So let's quickly review Taylor expansions on the side. So let's say we want to find the behavior of some function g of y in the neighborhood of a point y naught. In that case, we can use the Taylor expansion of g of y, which looks something like this. g of y naught plus g prime at y naught times y minus y naught plus g double prime y naught over 2 factorial times y minus y naught squared, and the series continues. Now, if we want to find the behavior of the derivative of epsilon at the neighborhood of the fixed point x sub f, we can use this Taylor expansion. d epsilon by dt equals f at x sub f plus f prime at x sub f times epsilon plus xf minus xf plus terms of the order of epsilon plus x sub f minus x sub f squared where this expression at the end, this O of epsilon plus xf minus xf squared, this expression denotes all the terms in the Taylor expansion, where the power on epsilon plus xf minus xf is greater than or equal to 2. Once we simplify this and get rid of the xfs, here's what we'll end up with. Since epsilon is supposed to be a very small perturbation, the higher power terms involving epsilon can be safely ignored, and we end up with a linear approximation of the rate of change of the perturbation epsilon. Now since xf is a fixed point, then xf will obviously make the function f0, which means the expression for the rate of change of epsilon becomes f prime xf times epsilon. We can easily solve this differential equation in epsilon, provided, of course, that our linear approximation holds and epsilon is sufficiently small. And after solving the differential equation, we'll end up with epsilon of t equals epsilon naught times the exponential of f prime xf times time. 
Now, if f prime xf is greater than zero, then epsilon will increase with time since the power on the exponential will be positive. So in regions close to the fixed point xf, the solutions will tend to diverge. And as a result, when f prime xf is greater than zero, the fixed point xf will be unstable. Now you might remember from the previous two videos that when we use the graphical method to determine the stability of our fixed points, we found that the fixed points of dx dt equals f of x would be unstable whenever the graph of f of x sloped upward at the fixed point. And in fact, this result that f prime xf is greater than zero for instability agrees with what we found in previous videos. By a similar logic, when f prime xf is less than zero, the exponent is negative. So as time increases, the perturbation epsilon will decay and the trajectories will converge to xf. As a result, when f prime xf is less than zero, xf is a stable fixed point. So when you plot f of x, that graph will have a negative slope at stable fixed points, which again agrees with what we observed in previous videos. So all we have to do when finding the nature of the fixed points of dx by dt equals f of x is to differentiate f of x with respect to x, evaluate f prime at the fixed point, and then determine the sign of your answer. If it's positive, we have an unstable fixed point. If it's negative, we have a stable fixed point. Now there's another important fact that you can glean from this exponential solution for epsilon. You can see that the coefficient of the time inside the exponential is f prime xf. But because the exponential has to be dimensionless, the product of f prime xf and t must also be dimensionless. And since t has the dimension of time, f prime xf must then have the dimension of one over time, which means that we can write one over f prime xf as a time constant tau, with the dimensions of time. By the way, the reason we put the absolute value here is to make sure that our time constant is positive. Now this tau that we defined here is called the characteristic time scale. The smaller this time scale, the greater the magnitude of f prime xf, and the more quickly our perturbations decay or increase. The larger this time scale, however, the smaller the magnitude of f prime xf, and the slower our perturbations change. Now let's do an example where we apply linear stability analysis to find the nature of the fixed points. In particular, we're going to find the nature of the fixed points of our favorite 1D dynamical system, dx by dt equals cosine x, which we covered in my very first nonlinear dynamics video. Now you know that if we want to find a fixed point, we need to set dx by dt equal to zero, which means that our fixed points x sub f will be some odd integer multiple of pi by two. If we want to find the nature of these fixed points, we don't even have to apply the perturbation epsilon and the entirety of the linear stability analysis. Instead, we can just use the steps up here. So let's differentiate cosine x with respect to x, which would give us negative sine x, and evaluate the result at the fixed point x sub f. The answer is negative one for x sub f equals 4k plus one times pi over two, where k is some integer. So at points such as pi by two, five pi by two, nine pi by two, and so on, we have stable fixed points. In contrast, the result is positive one for x sub f equals 4k minus one times pi over two, where k is again an integer. So at points such as negative pi by two, three pi by two, and seven pi by two, we have unstable fixed points. And if you go back to my very first video, links in the description, where I find the nature of fixed points of this cosine x differential equation graphically, you'll see that this algebraic result agrees with the phase portrait I drew in that video. Anyway, that should do it for this lecture. But before I go, there's one thing that I have to note. This linear stability analysis we performed, it does give you the nature of the stability of your fixed points, whether they're stable or unstable. But it's important to keep in mind that it only applies for very small perturbations around the fixed point, which means that this linear stability analysis would only give you the local behavior of the stability or instability of your fixed points. It doesn't tell you whether your fixed points are globally stable or not. It just tells you that they're locally stable. But for now, we don't have to really worry about the global stability, local stability thing. That's something we'll distinguish later on. 
In the next lesson, we're going to prove that autonomous one-dimensional dynamical systems like dx dt equals f of x cannot give oscillatory solutions. Now before I end, I'd like to thank my patron Jacob Suarez for donating at the $5 level. If you're interested in becoming a patron for my channel, I put a link to my Patreon page in the description and you can support me there if you wish. And that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan signing out.